to spend 100 bucks on the bottle of wine and taste it and compare. Yeah. That's how you get a comfort level that yeah. makes you want to taste more and more and discuss it more. Okay, more. Now, you have me in, now you have me in the mood to taste more wine. Very so let's good. taste more wine. This is uh, one of your favorites. This is my all-time favorite wine. This is the St. Francis Sonoma County Old Vine Zinfandel. And in addition to being all hand-picked, all Sonoma County fruit, oh. what we've done at St. Francis is hold true to what we call the St. Francis test for old vines. It's a three-part test. Three things we insist on, that if all three exist, we know that these vines are truly over 50 or 60 years old, in some cases as old as 130 years old. Head trained, meaning no wiring or trellising. If you look at the vines behind us, these are on wiring or trellising. This is more modern canopy management. Yeah. 100, 110 years ago, the farmers, particularly in Sonoma County, would put the uh, rootstock in the ground, hammer it in the ground, or pardon me, ha they wouldn't hammer the rootstock, they would hammer a wooden stake next to it, right. wrap a piece of twine around it, then they would go tend to the cows or chickens. Grapes were an afterthought. Grapes were a secondary crop. Yeah. They had other things to think of. So head trained, St. George rootstock, very much in use at, uh, at the turn of the last century. And what we've gotten the most attention on for the St. Francis Old Vines Inn, especially after it was named number one Zinfandel in the world by the Wine Spectator in 1999, yeah. notice how I just slipped that in, yeah. is the <laughs> fact that all, almost all, almost entirely dry farmed. No yeah. water, no drip, no irrigation. Average grapevine, 25, 28 years, you have to replant it. Once these old vines, they're really a local phenomenon. Yeah. Once they've hit about 35, 40 years, the roots reach deep in the soil, in some cases more than 30 feet into the soil. By not watering them, you're forcing the roots to reach deeper and deeper, as deep as 30 feet in some cases, for the irrigation. They get yeah. all their water from the subterranean water table. Mm. So by not watering these vines, you're forcing them to reach deeper. Yeah. You're putting stress and strain on the rootstock, on the trunk, on the vines. In some cases, we get less than a ton to the acre compared to three or four acres yeah. for Chardonnay or Merlot. I think I think Zinfandel is the perfect Thanksgiving wine because people say, well, Zinfandel, a, a, a rustic, bold red wine with turkey, mm -hmm. it's not about the turkey. It's about all the other flavors at the table, sweet and savory, stuffing, candied yams, vegetables. And the Zinfandel picks up so many different flavors, pumpkin pie, yeah. all the flavors at the table. So I call Old Vine Zinfandel the perfect Thanksgiving wine. It goes with so many different ethnic foods, Cajun, Mexican, uh, you know, even Japanese food with, with some of the spice, wasabi, yeah. things like that. Let's taste it. On, the, on appearance, what do you get on the color? Red. Well, yeah, <laughs> a lot of red, but I'm saying right. almost like a, um, a very luscious, almost vampiric shade. Yes. And I just lost my script. It, it's going where we're going to have. We're going off we're, the script yeah, now. Yeah, okay. We're just two guys drink, drinking wine. All right. Now let let's let's have a sip, or the nose. You get that fruity nose, that berry, mm. but it's a full. It's almost a sweet berry on the nose, uh, more fruity than sweet. But there's the, that those wonderful full aromas of berry. Imagine if you're opening a, you're in your your grandmother's kitchen, opening a jar of raspberry jam yeah. or blackberry jam. Oh seven, I get a hint more raspberry than blackberry, but. That's a wonderful nose. Now let's yeah. take a taste. Oh, I love this wine. It has that berry fruit. It has spice. Mm -hmm. It has that nice, round, luscious fruit. But no single flavor or characteristic overpowers the other. No, it's a perfect tapestry. I love this one. Of, My uh, favorite, favorite wine. <laughs> a perfect flavor tapestry, mm -hmm. truly. Um, and another thing I like about the Old Vine Zinn, what I tell my audience, mm. or what I say I like about wine to my audience, a very versatile flavor profile, mm -hmm. like you just said. I mean, you can pair it with so many different types of foods. I often pair mm. Zinfandel, I kid you not, with pizza. Oh, what's wonderful Artisan with pizza? pizza. You know Especially Rosso's. sausage pizza. You know Rosso's? I do. John Franchetti. I went to grade school with him. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I, terrific I, chef. Yeah. Every time uh, me, mom, and dad order some Rosso's, Old Vine's in. He could go. He And by the way, your mom is terrific, as is your father, but your, your mom is... is uh, has worked with St. Francis for a number of years, Sue, mm -hmm. and a former flight attendant. Yes. PSA flight attendant, no less. Yes, I appreciate you for yeah, saying that. Yeah, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, so does she. Uh, but <laughs> they do a wonderful, and he can make pizza out of absolutely anything, but mm -hmm. again, Zinfandel goes well. You can have it with ribs, with, with bacon burgers, with pizza, because there's so many different flavors, mm -hmm. sweet and spice and savory. Yeah. Zinfandel is such a versatile wine. It goes yeah. with everything at the table. I just love this wine. But I'm going to be I'm I'm going to get down to a little bit of brass tacks now. I've tasted Zinfandels out there that are overt or perhaps a little bit imbalanced or perhaps too jammy. 
um, and it doesn't really hit with me. This is not one of those wines. This is, I'm, I'm almost going to say, perfectly executed. And another thing I want to talk about St. Francis is the, the price point here at St. Francis is reasonable. It's relatable. In these tough economic times, you can... Yeah. You can you can find this for well under twenty dollars a bottle, uh, yeah. the, the old vine Zinfandel, and it's uh, at one of the one of our top uh, selling areas for this old vine Zinfandel are some of the better steakhouses across the country yeah. because it goes with beef, because it goes with just about everything on the table. Yeah. You know? Also, I wanted to congratulate you on two other Zins, uh, the 08 Montecillo and the 08 Pagani. Scored right. Pretty well. Both in got the ninety points 90 in the points. Wine Spectator last month. That we were very so pleased with that. Yeah. So a couple wrap-up questions. Uh, do you drink beer, and what kind of beer do you drink? I do drink beer, and my my taste and experience with beer is very, very unsophisticated. <laughs> Interesting story. I was in, I forget what city. I think I was in Milwaukee or somewhere in the Midwest about six or seven months ago, and I was tasting wine in a very fine wine shop that also had a very extravagant beer section. Oh. And the two sales guys left for a few minutes to go talk to somebody, and I'm standing there in the beer section. Yeah. A woman walks up to me and said, what beer do you think I should serve tonight? And she was talking about parties she had. Yeah. I had no idea. I didn't have a clue. And it reminded me how people are intimidated about wine. Yeah. And so the answer to that is don't crawl into a hole. Ask questions. Oh, learn more. Please. It's okay not to have a full understanding or experience with something, but you yeah. have to ask questions. That's how you learn. Yeah. And... Um, so I'm an incredible novice with beer. It's usually a light beer because try to try to keep it healthy. You're not. You don't like those IPAs, huh? I take yeah, man. A number a number of them. Um, yeah. I like I like Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Mm -hmm. uh, I like Sam Adams. I'm not, but see, I, I'm yeah. I, again, my, my taste in beer is extremely pedestrian. But if someone presents something to me, um, I did tour the Carlsberg beer factory in uh, the Netherlands on my 18th birthday. Wow. Because you were allowed to you're allowed to drink beer there, when you're yeah. 18 over there yeah. and so uh, and there were samples at the end of the uh, at the end of the tour but beyond that I don't have a tremendous amount of experience with beer. And now sorry. the random no don't be sorry it's fine. <laughs> and now the random question what is your favorite movie? My favorite movie or one of your favorite movies. My favorite movie is probably Cinema Paradiso. The Italian film oh. um, from, I believe it was 1990, and it's a story of the, the boyhood of a man in a little village in Italy who grows up to be a very successful producer filmmaker, and it talks about the old man who helped him run the little uh, movie theater in this small little village in Italy and how life went on, and it's a very touching film. And if I had to pick a favorite film, uh, Cinema Paradiso would be my favorite, far and above. It's just... It's a touching story, yeah. and it reminds us how important our childhood is and how we always draw back to our childhood and find comfort in the lessons we learned during our childhood. And that's one of the reasons why how we treat children and the impact people can have on children is so very important. So wow. there's your there's your movie pick. <laughs> well, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much Thank again you very for much, taking the Mike. time. Thanks for having me. Yeah, taking Pleasure. the time to meet me and uh, visit St. Francis at your earliest possible chance. <laughs> great wine, great people, uh, great friends. All right? Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Peace.